I want to jump to this uh, story here. This is breaking news. CNN recently announced they're not going to be saying breaking news, but this one is from CNN Business. The Washington Post suspends reporter David Weigel over a sexist retweet. OK, now, before we get into this, I would like to shout out Senator Ben Sass, who said that weirdos are running the political space. It's an algorithm driven by rage. And he's he's half right, but he's not completely right. There are weirdos running things, but it's not the fringe. This is becoming mainstream politics. Don't believe me? Dave Weigel retweeted a joke on Twitter. Probably, he's probably sitting there on the toilet. He's probably like, look at his phone. He's like, it's a joke. It's end of that. Oh, what's that? Yeah, that's funny. Retweet. Anyway, where was I doing? And then all of a sudden, a bunch of women at the company start freaking out, saying he's sexist. And now he's suspended from his job. This is a guy who's reported on, on Seth Rich. He's report. I mean... This, this is a high profile political reporter with 600,000 followers who's been suspended for retweeting a joke on Twitter. He didn't say anything to his, to his coworkers, just retweeting it. This is Twitter being the real world. I, the, the, I can't ahead. imagine what it's like to Can work tell? at the Washington Post. Oh, and also, don't forget, we got this story about Taylor Lorenz oh lying about these YouTubers. So here's, the, sh- sh- do they, I wonder if they have the joke on... Uh, you looked that up, but this Great is my joke. first response to this. <clears throat> from all the treachery, from all the horrible things that the corporate mainstream media has done, WMDs, banker yeah. bailouts, lying through their teeth, it's putting innocent people at the fray because they, they, they smirked, uh, lying, libeling, destroying people's livelihoods, going to grandma's homes because they opened up a Facebook page, doxing individuals. This is what you punish them for? <laughs> a, a retweet of a joke? Are, are you kidding me? This shows you the fake nonsense bull crap that is really happening behind Let the me, corporate media i mean you worked you worked in the corporate media you probably know pr and hr and all this other stuff that happens behind the scenes but why do you think this happened why would they why would they punish him, him? yeah was it really I mean, the outcry or is it them just trying to outwoke the wokeness? well you know to me and we do you want to read the joke well i want to it? it actually no, we sa- cannot it, read it, this on air it's far it, it too actually it so. actually oh. says why she oh did. i was like you can't it actually <laughs> says why they did it <laughs> What? So the joke was, quote, every girl is bi. You just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. He retweeted that. Felicia <laughs> Sanmez had recently had a discrimination lawsuit against the paper dismissed, a decision her attorney has said she plans to appeal. There it is. So they're trying to protect their their bottom dollar. I mean, that's what it comes down to. But to me, what Felicia did, Fel- and her name, of course, has to be Felicia, mm-hmm. what Felicia <laughs> did after this is worse and when you're talking about the actual culture of a newsroom and having worked in mainstream media newsrooms can be very challenging places to work but i and i've worked in really toxic ones but if i had an issue with something that a coworker tweeted and i'd had coworkers who had issues with something i tweeted they walked across the room and they told me about it <laughs> or they picked up the phone or they sent a text so felicia gets on there and shames publicly her coworker for retweeting this. And then I don't know if you guys saw this, uh, Jose Del Rio, he also works for the Washington Post. He called her out on it on yeah. Twitter. And he's basically like, hey, you know, said essentially what I said is, if you have a problem, like go talk to him, but this is toxic to be calling him out on Twitter. So he's since deleted all that. And I feel so bad for this guy. He, he put out a tweet saying, last night I came under an unrelenting series of attacks intended to tarnish my professional and personal reputation. The cause, some tweets I sent calling for compassion within our workplace. And so he talked about all the attacks and he briefly deleted his Twitter account, took it down over it. Wow. Yes. And he works at the Post. I, so you made a very good point about the fact that if you were working at a news outlet, what you would do is speak to someone who said something offensive to you. Unfortunately, I, and you know, this is just my own perspective, they haven't said this, but I would venture to guess that their goal was not to have any kind of problem solved. It was just to grandstand in front of the public and virtue signal and show everybody how put upon they are having to work for this news network, how difficult their life is. The question is, would you rather have a coworker who retweets offensive things in their off time or a coworker who will smear you in front of the public without ever having a conversation with you about it prior? That's what I'm saying. She's worse. I got a better one for you. Or would you rather have a coworker who fabricates the news? Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to pull up this story from newsdiffs.org, oh, our good friend Dave Weigel deserves to have been fired five years ago, not oh suspended my. over a sexist retweet. Why? Because Dave Weigel effectively fabricated a story about Seth Rich, essentially accusing Kim.com of trying to hack Gmail to plant false evidence. Newsdiffs shows 
that the original article on May 24th, 2017 was edited November 18th, 2017 and completely changed. I'll give you the simple version. First, the image I'm showing. The green is the latest. The red is what removed. What Weigel was trying to insinuate was that because Seth Rich's Gmail account received an alert from Mega.com, that means in all likelihood Kim.com was trying to hack the email to plant fake evidence. In reality, people on 4chan had posted that they signed up, they, they put Seth Rich's Gmail into Mega to see if they would get a ping back for an existing account. This triggered a welcome email to go to the email account. And then the Washington Post fabricated a story. I reached out to Dave Weigel for comment. He didn't correct it until several months later, without notice and without an editor's note or a correction. The story just changes completely. See, they don't fire people for things like this. Yeah. Now, what's fascinating about this is think about how this impacts things like Wikipedia. This story will be used as a, as a factual reference to Kim.com hacking Gmail or trying to, and they'll cite the Washington Post who six months later will change the story, but Wikipedia won't change. Mm -hmm. These people are, what, what's, the, what's the right word? I, you know, I feel like evil is, is going easy on them. Den of scum lords. Yeah. So dumb. you know what, Dave? Dave, you should have been fired for this. Your, your institution is garbage. Taylor Lorenz deserves to work for the, for the Washington Post. And everything coming their way, it's exactly what you deserve. Jeff Bezos is a scumbag. He bought it. Congratulations on your trash investment. Yeah, I, I would argue one of the signs, and one of the most uh, obvious straightforward signs of a failing system or society is that the mainstream institutions are no longer operating in accordance with their purpose. So... The dominant media culture in this country has been pretty dishonest for a very long time. This is not a recent development. But the fact that somebody who works for the media, which is purportedly there to expose us to important truths, would not get in trouble for publishing a story which had fabricated information in it or tried to insinuate things were some other way than they were in reality. The fact that that's acceptable, he doesn't get in trouble for that. But he does get in trouble for this retweet shows not simply that it's the case that this institution is no longer operating in, in accordance with what its purpose should be, but also we can detect what its new purpose is or what they are attempting to go for, which is to promote a woke left-wing narrative. And because he failed to do that, he was fired. Well, it's all fruit from the same poisonous yeah. tree. I mean, it all has to do with that obsession with virtue signaling. I mean, that's why mm. their reporting is so bad. That's in part, that's why their reporting is so bad. And that's why they would fire him over something like this. I got I to read you some of this article. You, you guys are going are gonna to laugh, all right? So here's what happened. Mega.co.nz. That's Kim.com's website. You may know Kim.com from Mega Upload way back in the day. So this is Mega.co.nz. It's a new it's a New Zealand top level domain, the .co.nz, right? That so so here's what he writes. The latest this is the original article. The latest revelation that a hacker from New Zealand may have been trying as recently as this week to hack into Rich's email offered fresh evidence the conspiracy theory is false. .com it seemed may have been willing to create a fake archive of emails from Rich to prove his role in the DNC leak. He changed to say Someone may have been trying to hack into Rich's email, offered fresh evidence that the conspiracy theory is false. The family worried that .com or someone eager to prove him right may have been willing to create a fake archive of emails from Rich or crack a password to see whether Rich had passed on documents with a mega account. Just because the email came from .nz does not mean a hacker from New Zealand. But instead of issuing a correction, an apology and retracting the article, they stealth edited it six months later. They say nothing. Now, if you go back to the article, it's all cleaned up. These people are scumbags. Well, that's like that Elon Musk article that was just like, it was New York Times, right? Where it talked about, tried to somehow tie him to like the racist uh, history of, of South Africa. And it was really odd. I mean, they totally went through and scrubbed it and rewrote it so it was softer because the way they had written that article initially about Elon Musk made it seem like he was his family and he was like racist and all this stuff. And then they rewrote it in a way that distanced him from uh, from South Africa and from apartheid. Yeah, and this is the crazy thing. These are the authoritative sources. These are the sources that, that big tech social media mm -hmm. uh, runs in their algorithm. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, they promote these accounts, these individuals, these lying scumbags and 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 they get 
no accountability, no transparency, and this is the only time that they get punished for, for retweeting a joke. It, it, it's a joke in itself, and it's sick, and, it, and it's no, a sad joke. No corrections on this article. I have it right here. Here's the, here's the actual argument that stands now. It says May 24th, 2017. But as I showed, news diffs, which I believe is defunct, showed that it was edited in November of that year. Here's the best part. A couple other mainstream reporters retweeted the story as fact. They retweeted the story right at Kim.com did do this. Mm -hmm. And when I reached out to them, they said they effectively told me to screw off. One guy, he I think he worked for BuzzFeed, a year later said, I must have missed this. Sorry, I'll take the tweet down. That's what they do. A year later, wow. they, they publish conspiracies, lies, and fake news, and then no one fact checks them. Here's the best part. NewsGuard. We use NewsGuard on all of our, our sources, right? Yeah, we like NewsGuard. But here's the funny thing. If the New York Times says it's true, NewsGuard just assumes it is. And then if you get evidence proving New York Times wrong, they'll say you lied because these people are all in one big <clears throat> circle of jerks yes. where they give each other awards for fake stories like Russiagate and then never investigate and never give the awards back. They do a lot more sicker stuff behind the scenes, but that's another story. Family friendly show. I'm not going to go there. I, I knew some journalists. A lot of them are just drug addicts, uh, pill poppers, uh, manic depressants, and just absolutely insane people that will do anything for a buck. Essentially, the corporate media is PR for the establishment. This is the perfect representation of it. Uh, this little drama thing shows you the perfect representation of our current media state that is filled with absolute nonsense. Um, and, that, and that's what it is. And I think these stories need to be proliferated. I think we need to talk about stealth editing. I think we need to continue to remind people that, hey, when you're watching the news, you're watching an agenda. You're just, watching yep. something just, that rich people only want you to understand and know. Just think about what is okay at these newsrooms. A stupid joke is a suspension-worthy event, publishing fake news. Don't worry about it. We'll sweep it under the rug. Ruining a child's life just because yeah. he smirked. Yeah. Yeah. Intentionally yeah. suppressing the Epstein story. Exactly. Right. You know, having having victims come forward in the 90s to you say, hey, there's this powerful man with an island doing unspeakable things to me and all these thousands of children and just looking the other way and not reporting on it. Absolutely mm -hmm. disgusting behavior. Writing the story, making the story, editing the videos, and then not publishing it when, when you have, according to CBS News, according to the Project Veritas, people like Bill Clinton, that, that you got him when it comes to this bigger uh, story surrounding a Mr. Epstein. Again, lots of bombshell stuff that, that could help humanity. But the reason we can't have nice things is because of the corporate media. Yeah. That's Let's, my perspective. Yeah. Let's, well, I, I, I want to make a point here. There's this old idea or this line from Solzhenitsyn, you know, the, the line between good and evil runs across every man's heart. One thing I would like to impart to anyone in the mainstream media, if they happen to be listening or would take any of what we're saying seriously, is that if you want to talk about combating misinformation, right? Well, the war between misinformation and truth also runs across everyone's heart. Everyone's capable of lying for their agenda. Everyone ideally should want to tell the truth for their agenda. Unfortunately, it's not the case. If you are so concerned about misinformation and disinformation spreading, and you think that there is just a flood of unfounded conspiracy theories and people don't trust the mainstream media like they shouldn't, so the traditional gatekeepers are gone, maybe don't stealth edit articles that were promoting misinformation as if you were telling the truth the entire time. If you are concerned about the fact that public trust in the media has eroded, you need to look in the mirror and figure out ways to improve. It's not our fault. It's not as if the media was doing a great job and then people started making a living in, in making a career out of working in alternative media. You guys dropped the ball. Now people are looking to other sources and you're jealous of the other sources and you're hating them instead of trying to figure out what you're doing wrong. One thing I wanna say about Jeff Bezos, I'm gonna make a prediction. I think he's gonna say something about all this. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna say something negative about his own paper about this. He's been a little. He's been kind of coming. I mean, he said the things about the White House, about inflation. The Elon he, Musk comment was pretty interesting. Yeah, as well. he's been he's been saying more things um, that surprised me on Twitter uh, than he has in a long time. And so I'm gonna make a bet that I think he's gonna say something negative about his own paper about all this. I hope he does. He well, should. He's he probably should. gonna be partying, taking steroids, and just hanging out and not give, not caring. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.